All right, welcome back. So <clears throat> I wanted to do a video on sort of my Emacs configuration. I've already done a video on my package configuration, <clears throat> but I also want to talk about configuring Emacs in general. So <clears throat> one thing that I forgot to mention when I did the package video is how you install packages in the first place. So the way that you handle packages in Emacs is just with MX list packages is sort of the first thing that you need to do when you want to handle all your packages. <clears throat> that, that phrasing is wrong. Uh, <laughs> MX list packages will show you all the packages that are available to you. And if you have more than one archive set up, it'll list which archive the package is from, in addition to its status, whether or not you can install it, but it's not installed, that's available. And then whether or not it's built in, or it's installed, or it's a dependency. So you can see here, these are all of the packages that I currently have installed, either manually or that were brought in as a dependency. And <clears throat> the way that you install a package in general is you can move to the line that has the package and just hit I. And then you can do that for however many packages you want to, and then hit X. And then it'll ask you, hey, do you want to install these packages? You say yes or no. And if you decide you accident if you accidentally hit I or decide you don't want to install them, you can just hit U on the lines that you hit install on. Um, <clears throat> and then if you want to delete a package that you have installed, you just hit D on the line that you want to, and then hit U on that line to undo that. And then if you want to upgrade packages that you have installed, you just type Shift U. And I've recently run Package Upgrade, but that will mark any packages that are out of date for deletion, and then install the newer version. And then you just hit X to upgrade. Similarly for installing and deleting regularly. So if you want to see more information about a package, you can hit some you can just click on that <clears throat> link or hit enter with your cursor over it and it'll tell you sort of what that package is all about. So custom theme inspired by Hero Dark for Sublime text. So if you're coming from using Sublime and you used that theme, then you could have Emacs look like that. So that's how you install packages. I have, you know, most of the packages that you're going to want to use are going to come from Melpa. There's also the GNU archive, which is by default included with the standard Emacs configuration. So I'll kill that buffer. And the way that you get Melpa is just to do put these three lines in your configuration file before you do any package configuration. So <clears throat> that's basically how packages work. And then I'll just start from the beginning of my <clears throat> configuration file. The basic, you know, way that, like, this is just a script that gets run when you start up Emacs. So one thing that I have is I have it set to be full screen, but I also have it iconified immediately after that. That's basically because I'm when I start up my desktop environment, when I log in, start my window manager, I don't have a desktop environment. I don't want Emacs to show up, but I want it to be running. And the reason for that is because I have Emacs running as a server, 
which means that when I decide to edit a file for whatever reason in my terminal, it will use Emacs to do that editing if Emacs is running as a server. So the, that's the reason why I have it, like, it's set to start up automatically, but I don't want it showing necessarily right away. And then I'm not going to go over my LaTeX convenience functions because this channel isn't about doing math. Uh, I used those a lot when I was uh, in grad school for, for math. <clears throat> and it's not something that I really use very much anymore. But, you know, that's kind of kind of nice to have. Um, the convenience, so I'll go to my convenience file, and the way this load function works is it, by default, looks for the file that you've given here, but with the .el extension. So that's why I have the buffer convenience.el and not just convenience. But if you look at this, the thing that I want to point out here is that this entire buffer is mostly just key bindings that I have set up, custom key bindings that I have. And when you make custom key bindings, unless you want to modify the behavior of an existing key binding to do something similar, if you want you know, a key binding to run a particular function that you made or that is unique to your setup, it should probably begin with control C. So the control C key prefix prefix is designed for your custom key bindings. And so I have a <clears throat> key map that I've called CCW key map and it's Key binding is control C followed by K. So then uh, I've got a bunch of functions defined that are custom to me. And uh, instead of having to set these to a to the global map, I can just define them for the CCW key map. So that way when I type control C K A, it inserts this little string, which you'll use a lot if you're programming in C. So I'll go to my scratch buffer, and <clears throat> if I type control C K A, that inserts that little sequence of commands. And <clears throat> I just have that because my right pinky is like kind of messed up, and I've remapped my keyboard to make things easier for my right pinky. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> because I've broken it a couple times. And if you're programming on a standard QWERTY keyboard layout, you have to hit something like 12 keys with your right pinky, or you're supposed to hit something like 12 keys with your right pinky. And I don't want to live that life. So <laughs> I've made it so that I only have to hit like four keys with my right pinky, which is much more reasonable. So that's essentially, you know, the way that you define key bindings is you say, okay, define key, and then the key map that you want it to be set to. So if you want it to be available in the global key map, right, with no prefix, then you would just put uh, global map here. <coughs> Um, let me go to my Emacs, and yeah, so define key global map. I have a couple key bindings here that are just in the global map. And if it's anything other than a single character, you should use this KBD function. And that just takes a string, and uh, the string is the normal Emacs documentation way of describing... Keys. So this is control C 
then release the control C and hit K. And then down here, if I hit A, because this is mapped to the CCW key map, I have to hit control C, K before this A will actually insert the pointer. Otherwise, or will run this function, insert pointer. So otherwise, <clears throat> you know, you don't want A to just be inserting this pointer regardless. But <clears throat> anyway, that's this is how you get keys to or bind keys essentially. Um, <clears throat> if you if there's already a function defined that will do what you want it to do, then <clears throat> you can just put a single quote in front of the name of the function and that's that. If you need to create a custom function to do something with a key binding, then you need to do learn how to write ELISP functions. But, you know, just as a basic introduction to that, you know, you can use this model for simple key bindings where you just want your key binding to insert something into the buffer. You need to have this keyword defund followed by the name of the function, which can be whatever you want it to be. And then if it's going to be interactive, right, if it's something that you're going to call uh, directly from a key binding, then you need to have this interactive keyword here, and you need to have an empty list of arguments. This is just a documentation string. So that can kind of just be whatever you want, just a description of the function. And then the rest of it is what you want the function to do. And this insert command just inserts into the buffer what's in this string. So that's a rough way of how you can customize Emacs to do certain things. You can see here I've got another one that's for the, the equals pointer. I've got an insert parentheses one, which inserts these two parentheses, but then goes backwards a character so that my cursor is in between those parentheses instead of at the end of them. So I'll show you that in this buffer. If I do control C K P, then I can start typing. So <clears throat> that's what's going on there. And I've got a bunch of these insert braces, insert brackets, insert angle brackets, insert double quotes, insert single quotes, insert string function. So <clears throat> uh, That is, if I'm going to start writing a function that needs to have a string in the middle of it, I can just do control C, K, L, and it gives me this nice little setup that I can start typing in. Um, this begin function braces is something that I use when I'm programming in C, so I think it'll still work. Yeah, so it doesn't look quite exactly the same when I'm in a... <clears throat> you need to be in C mode. So if I switch to C mode, then that's what happens. So it's nice if you are... Um, Typing a function like, or I don't know, int main void, something like this. And then it just sets you up to start typing the function that you want. It's also useful if you're doing something like a for loop. You can use it for for loops as well. So that's kind of nice. <clears throat> okay.
So I think that's pretty much it for convenience. I also have this function swap windows, which <clears throat> is nice. I'll show you kind of what that does. If I go to my scratch buffer here, and suppose I want to like switch which side these windows are on, I can do mx swap windows, and it just swaps the order of those. So that's kind of nice. And then I have this function to uh, toggle how big the font is. So, you know, that's just for recording purposes. So if you want to learn more about programming in Emacs Lisp, there's documentation on it. <clears throat> So this is the full documentation on Emacs Lisp. Uh, there's also an Emacs Lisp introduction, uh, and that's where I learned how to do the little bit of Emacs Lisp programming that I need to know just to configure Emacs how I want it to do, how I want to. <clears throat> but looking at examples of code <clears throat> like this is probably a little bit easier, honestly. So, yeah, anyway, that's it for that convenience buffer. There's also my hooks. So, when you enter, when you open certain buffers or open files, <clears throat> lots of times they will automatically go into a certain mode. So if the file name ends in .el, Emacs thinks that that's an Emacs Lisp file by default. And I have it set up to automatically go into view mode because I don't normally want to start changing things immediately. I normally just want to look at it and see what's going on. I have a similar setup in C mode. I have it set to... <clears throat> view mode first, and then I also have a, an even shorter shortcut for insert pointer, which is control C P in C mode. So that's just something interesting. Um, <clears throat> essentially, most of these are for scrolling up and down, right? So these, you know, if I go control H A and then do file, to get, look at commands that have the word file in them. I want to be able to scroll up and down with J and K. So <clears throat> the way that I do that is whenever I enter a buffer that is in apropos mode, I have it set to map in the apropos mode map, J and K are scroll up a line and scroll down a line. So <clears throat> that's just useful things that I've found useful and you can see like a lot of how a lot of these work so <clears throat> PDF view mode I have J and K and H to scroll down up and then left and then PDF history minor mode hook defines L as go backwards in the PDF viewing history but I want to define that to scroll right essentially so, yeah, that's basically what almost all of these are. There's, the shell mode stuff is not particularly relevant. And then I'm going to go over this gref mode hook in a later video because the way that I figured out how to do this, I think, is pretty enlightening as to how to make really sort of advanced customizations in Emacs when you don't know a ton about Emacs. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Everything else, you know, the way that you set a variable is with set Q and then the name of the variable and then what you want to set it to. So that's pretty much what all of these 
you know, set cues are doing. It's just particular variables that modify the behavior of things. If you want to figure out what a variable does, type control H V while your cursor is over it and it'll bring up, you know, you can see down at the bottom, this has the default confirm kill Emacs as the variable that you want to find more information about. And it'll tell you what it's, uh, <laughs> it'll tell you what that variable does. So how to ask for confirmation when leaving Emacs. If nil, the default don't ask at all. If the value is non-nil, it should be a predicate function. For example, yes or no p. And that's what I have it set to. So that's just making sure that I don't, if I accidentally hit control X, control C, I don't want Emacs to automatically quit because occasionally I will accidentally hit control X, control C. You know, maybe I'm just trying to hit control X and my finger slides over to the C before I lift up the control modifier. So, you know, that's what's going on there. And then uh, this is just some more key bindings. You can see these are bound to the global map. <clears throat> but yeah, that's basically all that's going on there. This is the, the default C style that I code in is the BSD style. Um, <clears throat> this view read only means that when I toggle read only mode or when I make a buffer read only, it puts me in view mode. So if I didn't have that set, then these hooks that I have here would not be defined when I entered read-only mode. And so it's nice when I enter read-only mode. Um, here, I'll do that again because I accidentally hit an extra key. If I enter read-only mode, it says view mode instead of just read-only read-only mode enabled or disabled. With view mode, I can, you know, set up those hooks, and there's a bunch of other convenient key bindings that make life a little easier. So, <clears throat> this is the default. So, you don't actually have to have that if you're, you know, trying to mimic my configuration. <clears throat> there are certain commands that are disabled, by default in Emacs, you can enable them by doing this, essentially. So, and then this is the part, the custom set variables is everything that I've modified via the Emacs customization options. So if you go to Emacs Customize, you can sort of browse through here and look at all of the various things that you can customize. And when you do that, when you click apply and save, so if I go in here to files, you can hit like apply, which will apply that setting for just this session, or you can click apply and save. If you hit apply and save, it will add something to this set of things in here. And <clears throat> if you are wondering what you've done, I find that, you know, via Customize, I find that this is the easiest way to see all of the things that you've changed with custom set variables or with MX Customize. So <clears throat> I'll just go through uh, a couple of these that I think might be interesting, this column number mode. Oh, and also if you want to <clears throat> modify any of these, the best way to do it is to go to your, you know, type MX Customize and then column number mode in search and then it'll bring up how you can customize it. So, right, it's got a toggle and you can customize things a little bit more easily using this, this method. So, <clears throat> column number mode, essentially, 
instead of just saying what line I'm on, it'll also say how far into the line I'm on. So right now I'm on line 59, column 0. So I'm at the very beginning. If I go forward, you can see that this, you know, increases as I go forward in the line. So <clears throat> custom enabled themes. This is the theme that I use for... <clears throat> This is the theme that I use that gives me my colors, Tango Dark. Um, fringe mode, zero nil fringe. <clears throat> I don't know, understand the syntax for this entirely. I just used the, ah, I misspelled it. So yeah, you can just set value mode default, no fringes, right only, left only, all this stuff. And I don't like the fringes, so I uh, <clears throat> have that disabled. Um, inhibit startup screen. If you don't want that default screen that comes up with the default configuration to show, just have that be true. <clears throat> The these things are just initial buffer choice, right? What buffer do you want shown initially when you open Emacs? I don't have anything set there. Initial scratch message is what gets displayed in the scratch buffer by default when you open up Emacs. I have it set to do nothing. Menu bar mode is nil. I also have toolbar mode set to nil so that there's nothing at the top of this screen. Um, these are the packages that I have installed. That's for PDF mode. Save place mode I think is pretty nice. Um, if you close down Emacs, the next time you open it up again, it will have scrolled down It'll save where, like how far down you were scrolled to in a buffer, and the next time you open that buffer, it'll take you to that point. So scroll bar mode I also have set to nil, so I don't have little scroll bars over here on the side. Um, and then I also have show parent, parent mode, so that's nice. If I'm at a parenthesis, it'll highlight the parentheses and the matching parentheses. So this matching parentheses is not on screen, so you can't see it. It's, <clears throat> but you can find it by, if you're at, you know, highlighted parentheses, you can type control meta and then P, and it will take you to the previous matching parentheses if you're, and this works for brackets and braces as well. It'll take you to the previous match, it'll take you to the matching one if you're on an a closing one if you type control meta p and then if, if you're at an opening one and type control meta n it'll take you to the matching closing one so <clears throat> that's kind of nice and then i have tooltip mode set to nil so essentially sometimes when you hover over stuff it would pop up a little box over your mouse pointer giving you some information. I have it set to just display that down here in this bottom part, right? So this is, normally this would pop up in a little box, but I have it set to just pop up down here. And then the custom set faces, it's, if you go to customize and uh, go to, if you type MX customize and then go to the faces section, stuff that you do in here will be <clears throat> modified in that section. But the biggest one that I'll say is that, that you might need to do is if you go into basic faces and then scroll down to default, you might need to change the size of the default right here. So just something to be aware of. <clears throat> Lots of times the default size is way too small. So <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. 
Uh, I've been over my package configuration in a separate video, and also a little bit in this one, but uh, hopefully that helps you customize your Emacs and get it looking nice and pretty and doing the things that you want it to do, for starters. So if you like this video, hit like. If you disliked it, hit dislike. In either case, let me know down in the comments below why, as well as if you've got any questions, criticisms, or concerns. And as always, if you want to get notified when I make new videos, hit subscribe. Thanks. Peace.